fix it, Jamaica? Can we fix it? Can we fix it? Can we give it a proper fix? Jamaica, we have a serious housing problem. When last we see house a bill for me and you? When last we see Jamaicans can afford proper housing solutions? Teachers, nurses, doctors, police, soldiers. I don't know about you, but we need to have this discussion today. The NHT, the National Housing Trust, was developed. It was coined for lower income earners to own a house. But under these governments, under successive governments, Many ordinary Jamaicans have not been able to acquire a house. Up to 55% of those who contribute to the NHT Jamaica can't acquire a house. That's almost 800,000 Jamaicans who contribute to the NHT, but yet still don't have access to a house. And yet still, you have a man up at Jamaica house who said, the NHT is not a charity, it's a business. Yes, it is a business. But business for whom? Business to take up money, for go fix police station, for go fix school, for go fix road, for put in a consolidated fund, but not for the business of the people. Jamaica, this discussion today will unfold and we're going to have, we're going to question, what's the mandate of the NHT? Is the NHT working for some or is it working for none? Is it working for all? Is it working for me? Is it working for you? Or is it working for Roger? Today on Filtered, we discuss the NHT. Is it a crisis? Or is it a situation that can be fixed? Bye! When we say, Bob, the builder, can we fix it? Jamaica, I wonder if me or Roger can fix the housing solution in Jamaica. Stay tuned. I don't know about you in Jamaica. But I find it very strange that so many ordinary Jamaicans contribute to the National Housing Trust. But many ordinary Jamaicans have not been able to own a house. And when I look at it, successive governments, not me not talk labor right alone, me I talk both labor right and PNP, they have all milked the cow of the NHT. Roger. Why is it so many ordinary Jamaicans can't own a house? Andre, greetings. I don't know if it's this idea of freeness that I think is really causing a problem in the minds of people. Uh, because the average Jamaican can't just own a house. The average Jamaican would have to make the necessary contribution. And the average Jamaican, I don't know if they're making any contribution. But... Right? Uh, the truth is, majority of persons who are contributors are those persons who are in the formal sector. But a significant portion of Jamaica exists in the informal sector. The informal sector, though, are the ones who expect the benefit. I, I don't think that's fair. No, 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 Roger. I'm talking about teachers... Nurses, doctors, soldiers, police, firefighters. Many of them... Andre, for that is so unfair. No, of course! You, you go to several housing schemes across Kingston. Housing developments across Kingston. And nurses, firemen, soldiers, teachers are living in these homes. Yes, but to what so magnitude, it may be Roger? a case where teachers may want high-rise apartments or they may want townhouses. And it's and out of their range. I do understand that things are, out, are going to be out of people's range. No, Roger. I disagree with you right there. Because what I am saying is, I've not, I've not seen in a very long time a large percentage of the labor force who is working, who is acquiring a house yearly. Because if 5,000 housing solutions are dealt, are, are sorted each year, on average... How many people can access those? You know, How many working Andre, professionals you know what, can I've, access those? You know what those? I've found, in, found out in my own informal investigations? Mm -hmm. You see, when things come up, for example, like it's termed low-income housing, people don't want them. 
Because in their minds, it's poor people. Poor house. people house. And you know what? It's those professionals who can afford them. They are the ones who access two and three of these houses, you know, and rent it back to them. Right? Oh, you sure about that? And rent it back to those who didn't want so it. So you're saying the professionals acquire the houses of, or the lower income Of bracket, course. And then go buy them because and the rent them back to people. Because the people who need it are so full of pride. Really? They don't buy it. I we have an inherent issue with, with, with mindset in this country. Yes, we understand that there are issues in terms of land reform and housing. But we must also in tandem work with the mindset of people in this country. But then why is it that I should, I should be pulling up? If you're this a, pulling up if you're idea. a teacher, no, if, you are, no, if you are a civil servant, you quite possibly cannot live in a townhouse. Yeah, but the idea of pulling up. To reach you to quite the, possibly the, 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 cannot the live in a gated community news flash. Why they can't live in my dream if the prime minister can live on hilltop in his house, house after house after house. A teacher, a soldier, a police must be able to acquire a house and live comfortable to Roger. Wherever, in a gated wherever community. you live and, and you're dreaming and sleeping, I hope it doesn't turn into a nightmare because that's not the reality, sir. And you know it, you know it. So, then I'm going to ask you so you're of the view then. And you take the sentiments of the Prime Minister that the, the NHG is not a charity. The NHG is not a charity. But it's a charity for the government. Though. It has always been a charity for the government. Because successive governments have taken out near 200 billion. Right? Some have taken out... Um, previ the previous government under F Dr. Phillips took out m monies. Then this new government took out near 200 billion. There are provisions made in the law for them to do that. So what I am saying is, if the NHT mandate which the trust is to provide houses, housing solution for ordinary Jamaicans, especially those who are at the lower echelon, the poor cl poorer class, and yet still, the mandate of the NHT is not being met, being met because governments, successive governments, have dipped in the NHT. Andre, you're being unfair. No, they have dipped in the resources of the NHT. Andre, and the NHT unfair. is therefore unable to fulfill the mandate I, of housing solutions for ordinary Jamaicans. From Portia Simpson retire, there's not been any housing solutions for poor people. It was tell the truth. Because poor people want free, and that's not how the world works. You know what? It's not free they want. You know what is interesting? It's not free they want. I'm going to tell you what they want. Andre, could you Can I respond? No. Let me give you a pass. I'm going to fix your Thank business you. today. Thank you. You know, you know, it's interesting that the people who have been listed in statistics are living in unplanned housing. Mm. You know, these unplanned who was the residents. Un who are the unplanned uh, residents? These quarters are quite possibly not people who exist in the formal sectors. The people who don't pay housing trust in the first place, who somehow we think by means of apology or somehow I can't even explain why they should be given the benefit. Absolutely not. You want that benefit, either you find a job that allows you to get that benefit or you make the necessary contribution. Poor people deserve house. How do you expect to fix crime in this country? How do you expect to fix poverty in this country when you as a society don't have planned housing structures? That is the inheritance that Portia put in place for those people. What successive governments and administrations should have done was to see to it that they implement policies such as the um what the policy name again? When we hear Damon Crawford talking about. The rent to own policy. Where these people can rent the house with 10, 15 years, they can have plans to own it. Absolutely, it must... absolutely not the case in this country. You know why? Because we're going to get the homes, as I said, as we've seen in other examples, even in the Porsche Simpson Miller constituency, people will get the house, they will not cooperate, they will not pay. Why do you say they won't pay? If it them is pay, the tendency of us No, to but if free. they pay them partner draw, Roger, the people in these areas pay them partner draw, hoping to get something on it. It is a matter of putting the discipline in place. It is a matter of carrying the NHT in place. Meet them where they are and make sure that they do the rudiments of paying. The greatest, the, the greatest injustice you can give to poor people in this country is to constantly giving them this idea that there's an entitlement or that stuff comes free. So Roger, when you're talking about poor people and their, their indiscipline to pay, I believe if we fix the model of the NHD and the housing crisis in Jamaica, where poor people can get houses to rent to own, 
you'd be surprised. But then the onus is for the NHT, Roger, to meet the people. To meet the people and see to it that they pay. So you go in on a monthly basis, set up a shop in the communities, and the people come and pay. And if it means you have to get the police, to see to it that them pay because we need to change the interdiscipline of our nation. So again, you are now bringing further issues with the poor because now you want them to engage in the law with the law one more time. So they have to engage with the law as it relates to light. They have to engage with the law as it relates to water and now you've added housing. But we're going to ask you. I'm really going to ask poor you. Poor people. I'm going to ask you this. Don't JPS work for them? I don't know. Well, JPS work for them because them can go put in the 2000 a month and it work for them. Don't water work for them? Yes, it has worked because water, man come in and set up the system and it go put even place. So if water work, if light work, <laughs> why then can't housing work? Housing can work because the model works for light and water. So bring in the legalities and make it work. You know what happened to we in this country? We have always discriminated of those, discriminated against those who are poor and disenfranchised. We have never given them a chance to own it, claim it, and discipline them to make sure say they're on the right path. You know what happened, Roger? We need the NHT to not just be charitable. We need it to be beneficial. And also we need it to work not for man uptown and man in the middle income for the man at the poor echelon of society and roger might talk him talk but i know jamaica i've seen so many ordinary jamaicans unable to own a part of jamaica land we love and i don't know about you but i can't take when the prime minister going to say the nht is not charity but i'm going to repeat this if it is not charity how it build police station, how it build school, how it build everything except building the mandate that Michael Manley and those in his time envisioned the NHT to be. Roger, you're silent now. So I know many Jamaicans feel this issue because when you go to the NHT, you're here, sorry sir, you have not qualified. What makes you qualified? If me, I figure join up with you and you and you to just qualify for a house in Jamaica. Something is wrong, Jamaica. We need to look at the NHT model and see how it can work for more Jamaicans. Stay tuned. Now, Jamaica, joining us is Mr. Mikel Phillips, the opposition spokesperson on housing, transport, and works. Mr. Phillips, greetings. Hi. The NHT was a brainchild of your former leader, Mr. Michael Manley. What's the mandate or what is the vision Mr. Manley had of the NHT? Well, the vision, the NHT was formed out of an agreement with the government of the day, uh, headed by Michael Manley and his administration to provide adequate housing for the working class of this country. Uh, so it was an agreement between the trade unions, the working Jamaicans. It was an idea that, that, that was first opposed because, you know, persons saw it as government coming and, you know, collecting this, uh, this, this fund from the working class. Uh, he had to do a lot of convincing, uh, to the unions and, mm -hmm. and those involved in the trade union movement of the day to convince the workers and employers to make a contribution to a trust so that the government itself and, and those who would most likely not be able to afford housing would be able to, to uh, access housing through that trust. And a trust, the, the trust was between the workers of Jamaica, especially those in the civil service, and the public and the private sector and the government of the of the day and successive governments so uh, that was the, 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 the thinking behind it and why the trust came about and was created so with the trust being envisioned 
with that mandate then do you believe that the present nht is relevant to the dream of michael manley there are still relevance in the nht but has the nht delivered on its mandate is a, is a different question oh uh, the, the, answer, the answer to that question is that it has not delivered on its mandate to the, the less fortunate in our in our society and for the what i would term the, the working for um you know in, in 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 our society but yeah, then i'm going to follow up on that question mr phillips with regard to it's they have not been able to fulfill the mandate it could have been said that probably last 20 30 years the nhc has not fulfilled the mandate of providing workable housing solutions so even successive governments have not fulfilled that mandate what is your take on that no i have, i'm in agreement i am in agreement that successive governments even even the, the, the government of the party that I'm a part of, the People's National Party, has alluded uh, both, both uh, successive government in providing for the majority of contributors to the housing trust. And why do I say that? It's because you're still having 45% uh, of those who are contributors to the housing trust, only 45% that have been able to receive a benefit from the housing trust. The majority of those who are contributors have not been able to, to benefit from, from, from their trust. Okay. Yeah. So uh, to say that uh, those at the bottom, the majority of those who are contributors are, are, are low income earners. Mm. And we have not been able to concentrate on delivering housing solutions for okay. low income earners. Now, if you, if I, I can say that there have been different policy directions uh, that that has gone that route, and so we can look at the policy directions as a difference to the NHG itself in delivering houses for low income earners. Oh, so, uh, so Michael, I'd like to pose a question to you at this time. I've heard, based on the conversation so far, this idea of the origin of the NHG and the importance of uh, Michael Mandy's vision. But so many years later, why do we need to stick to the origin of the NHT? Why is it that as we have emerged, as we've grown, as we have evolved as a people, we have not evolved the trust uh, of the NHT? Uh, why are we not talking in 2022 about a new look for the NHT? Whether or not the, the system worked, what we need to we need to do to make it work why are we still almost stuck in that kind of vision of former times well you can be stuck in a vision if you have, a, have achieved that vision huh? the, the, the question is have we achieved that that vision you still have eight hundred thousand jamaicans living in informal settlement hmm. eight hundred thousand right you have not been able to provide housing for that sector, much less for 55% of those who are contributors. So where we, where we, where, where we are positioned as, as the opposition itself, the, the whole issue of housing is not about uh, this, these grand announcements of, of prime ministers and ministers of housing, how many, like an in instance of the current prime minister, 75,000 housing solutions over five years but are you actually delivering those housing solutions to those who are most in need that is the question hence why you cannot remember you know the trust is not a regular financial institution as you would have a scotia or a vmbs this is a trust between the working class of jamaica and the government of the day and I give you this contribution, and I am expected that at some point I will get a benefit of being able to own mm. a home. So, Mikhail, this question I'm going to pose to you is absolute hearsay. I want to state that categorically. Uh -huh. Now, it has been said that Portia Simpson Miller is probably the closest uh, 
in recent history to moving towards providing exactly what you talk about, which is ho housing for the poor in her constituency. But when she did that, she came under significant criticisms from various parts of Jamaica, one. And two, there were complaints that the persons who received these benefits were not actually even paying and refused to pay for the actual units that they got. That is inherently wrong because here it is that we're actually providing the kind of model that Michael Manley would want, but the people themselves are not open to that kind of gifting because they want to abuse it. They want it for free. That would be impossible. So my thing is, here it was that a leader actually attempted to make something true to form and as, a, and as a result, in my mind, that's a total failure of the system. How would you address that? Well, the model, the model itself was one to provide housing of where persons are living in substandard um, conditions. There's a difference between a contributor and one that you're giving up. You're actually ah. giving, putting into a housing solution okay. that has not really contributed to to, to the trust itself, but you're providing them for this solution. There's this notion out there that once it is government, it ought to be free. Ah. Right? Um, so you have to look at the model. The model had to be tweaked because, yes, there was a, a, a large percentage of those who felt that they had not to contribute. But again, the model, it, it, with all good intent, needed to be tweaked to ensure that we have persons um uh, you know paying for at least a portion of what of that benefit that they have received uh, you, you 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 were not so in the instances let us look at models as operation pride mm -hmm. operation pride that had some success to it even though it went in a direction that you know the person started questioning um the, 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 the model itself, but it worked in some instances, in many instances, it worked in ensuring that you take those, mm. the, that large percentage of Jamaicans who live in informal settlements and making it a formal community by putting in a proper infrastructure, by, by, um, land titling, uh, Access and, to and, land. And, sorry? Access to lands and housing yes, solutions. Yes, yes. So, you know, I, I don't think the solution to, and, and, it, and if you read the housing policy document of 2019, it ha there's a section in it that says that various policy directions that have been done by successive governments in lowering the interest rate in um, various, you know, uh, moving it from one beneficiary to two beneficiaries, in this instance, three beneficiaries now, has not really put the, the put those persons who are low-income earners in any better position to own a home. So, Mr. Phillips, on the point that you made about Operation Pride being one of the successes of the PNP administration, I heard the PMP in 2020 championing the need for the rent to own scenario and it was scoffed at by the present administration and now we're seeing where the Prime Minister has made utterances that he's open to the discussion of ordinary Jamaicans I'm believing Jamaicans who are at the lower end of the strata being in a position to rent to own. What's your take on it? Was it a take of just political gibberish or do you think this is a good way for ordinary Jamaicans, especially in where Roger spoke about the people from Portia Simpson's constituency? Possibly if we had had a strategy whereby they were working to own the houses, renting them to own them over time, possibly that model would have worked better. What's your take on that? I'm in agreement that that model would work better with, with projects like what happened in former party leaders constituency of South West St. Andrew. Um, you know, the rent to own would have put the access to housing in um, in the hands of those in that category, low income earners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, it, it has been a trait of, of this administration to 
um, take ideas that have been on the table or put on the table by uh, PMP. Uh, not know, surprised. I'm not surprised because the Prime Minister has shown from, shown, from time to time. Um, well, more times than not, mm -hmm. that he is bankrupt of ideas itself and then try to take others and make it his own. And what we have been saying, and I said it in my own sectoral presentation, the whole issue, the, the, the matter of housing is one that is critical to the success of Jamaica as a developing state, to the success of, of growing the economy. Um, this is one that we as an opposition is willing to sit down at the table just for the betterment of Jamaicans, not, not, not for politics and who will build more. Mm. Uh, we have not delivered what we keep saying that we're going to deliver while beating our chest about building more. Just look at the Ruth Ben Towers. Ruth the Ruth Ben Towers. Ben Towers the Wait, man, let me emphasize that. <laughs> Jamaica, the National Housing Trust was coined and developed to be a trust for the working poor. And we now have the NHT billing 35, 40, 40 million dollar one bedroom apartment. Who go live in those, Mikkel? Well, definitely, if you, if you have read, there, there have been quite a few articles on it. But if you, the, the original concept of of that development was changed and uh, changed by the person who is actually the minister of housing who is in this instance the prime minister oh the uh, prime minister is the minister of housing yes and, and and let us go back to the creation of the, the, the national housing trust in the wisdom of michael manley he he the, the nht was is housed in the office of the prime minister mm. because he expected that the least political interference uh, and mm. for the trust in that and what the working class had put in in each administration that would come forward that the trust itself would be protected mm? but I, I don't I know if the trust is protected I now say, in I'm the interest of poor people with, with, no it is not so it, it seems as though no. I'm gonna I'm going to push you further it seems as though that the private developers um are it seems as though the interest of big developers have been to the benefit of the prime minister is it that this development at root ben road was a concept where the where the big box the, you, you want to chill with the big boys was it the case where the prime minister and his big boys wanted to carry on these big lush um developments and at the end of the day is only them friend and company can own them if you have looked at, at past report mm -hmm. each each development um each development done by the housing trust there is a, a block that is given to various groups like the police the the soldier the mm. teachers in the, they were given to them in the usual way in the Roosevelt um, development uh, and they had to give them back because it is out of the price range of the salaries of those in those sectors wow. right those persons who would normally go and pay for do a 30 million or a, or, a, or a 40 million apartment or townhouse are not one that would normally go to the NHT for a mortgage. Right? So what mm, is saying to you is that those that they're offering at the, at, at the Ruthven Tower are actually not for NHT contributors. But Mikhail, Mikhail, I, I want to push back against this issue because why is it that mid to upper level income earners who, if they work with government or the private sector, would have been charged um, by the NHT? Why is it that the concern is always the working poor when it is that there's a burgeoning group of, of professionals who earn above that kind of mark, who would love to, to, to own a home, who, like everyone else, Go to would the have bank. paid and required and require a benefit? Go to the we bank. Have, we have X them out of the equation. 
The fact is, a Ruth Fenn development does not exclude the NHT from building low-income housing. There's tons of state-owned lands yet to be developed, yet to be apportioned to the masses. Why is it that the Ruth Venn issue is such an issue for everyone when it's actually more inclusive than the NHT has ever been in recent history? Inclusive to whom? No, but to let you, me not say, go by the data. The data shows that there is not a shortage in that demand uh. for, for that price range. Where mm. the shortage is, is currently for those in the middle to lower income bracket. Okay, I get you. Okay. There's no shortage there. But I just, so there's no shortage in Roger Upper Echelon, right? But there's a short, of course, Roger, there's no shortage in, in your capacity because you're middle, higher income. But the truth be told, when I look at what is happening with the NHT, Mr. Phillips, why is it? I'm going to ask, is there a quota that is set by the government annually for those who are at the lower income to be a part of the housing solution in terms of housing, house ownership? All right. Let's, 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 let's look at the, the demand and supply side. So remember, we, we started off by saying only 45% of those who are contributors to the NHT actually get a benefit from the NHT. Mm -hmm. Right? Those in the lower income bracket, the data shows that they can't afford anything over 3 to $4 million. Oh. Right? Now, if you, if, if you have gone on the East-West Highway lately, and you see some quads being built over in the Spanish Town area, mm -hmm. St. Catherine area. The price range on those are $7 million for the single family unit. Seven, $7 million? Seven, right? For that box that you see there. So wow. If you're going to, so, so what has happened is that the lower end of the market has not been attractive for uh -huh developers, private developers. Yeah? So mm. that market has not been serviced as it would. So if the government provides what supply if the NHT supplies three or four thousand housing units mm. uh, annually, probably five hundred goes to the low income. Five hundred? Yes. So we're going Otherwise, to continuously have a housing but, dilemma. Because you have to now look at the salary scale. If that person is able to take 30% of their salary in, in, in how the financial institution work it, that no more than about 30% of your salary should go to the mortgage, huh? right? can they afford the mortgage? And hence why was it, uh, and data shows that they can't afford a mortgage over $4 million. So if this is my final question to you, because we need to wrap up now. So on average, only 500 out of the 3,000 housing solutions, approximately, approximately. approximately 500 out of the three or 4,000 housing solutions that are built annually goes to the working poor. So really, the mandate of the NHT is really not a charity. The Prime Minister says that NHT is not a charity. The, in your capacity as the opposition spokesperson on housing, what is your response to the Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Phillips? Well, no other administration has, has, has abused the NHT as this current administration in treating it as such. Right? Wow. So they're taking $11 billion a year, continue taking $11.4 billion, billion, I think it is. To do what? To, which goes to the consolidated fund bolster the, 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 the revenue stream of the government. I mean, they are taking half a billion dollars a year to refurbish police stations that are not in NHT schemes. They have taken, if, if you are to tackle it from 2016 to 2022, to the, how much money is that, Mr. Philip? 2022, the government would have taken out at least 200 billion dollars out of the NHT. And that 200 billion could have 
built houses NHT to do non NHT activities over 200 billion dollars to do non NHT to do non NHT work activities my god while we are not able to do or subsidize low income housing for that 55% of contributors who cannot get a benefit mr phillips and that's why I'm saying that we need to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. If 55%, the majority of those who contribute to the NHD, is not able to qualify for a benefit, then something is wrong with the current mm -hmm. model now. And we are in a position, we are willing to sit down to make it right for that, those 55%. It should not, that should be the purpose of us as legislators, so mm. how do we get those 800,000 Jamaicans out of an informal settlement and those 55%, which some of those 55% live in the informal settlement but can't come out because they can't get a benefit? Mr. Phillips, thank you for that. Prime Minister, the NHT is not charity. However, you are pulling over the past seven years near $200 billion dollars doing non-NHT work. This is Unfiltered. Stay tuned, Jamaica. Jamaica, having listened to Mr. Phillips, it begs me to question, is the NHT fulfilling its mandate? Ordinary Jamaicans are not able to offer or to get access to lower income housing solutions. On average, the cheapest house you can really find on the market is about $70 million. And many of whom want houses, can only afford houses between the bracket of 3 to $5 million. So it means, it begs the question, is the NHT enabling more people to go into squatting? Is the NHT providing housing solutions for the poor, the working poor, and those who need access to housing? Is the NHT mandate that Michael Manley philosophized to give poor people access to houses materialized? I don't think so, Jamaica. So it now begs me to question, do we need to go back to the drawing board? Do we need to question, do we need to position the NHT to once again becoming the enabler for poor housing solutions? That question was answered today. It's, the mandate is not being carried out because many Jamaicans cannot afford housing. So if you can't afford housing, squatting, squatter settlements will rise. Poverty will rise. Crime will rise. And if we will have this myriad of problems, Jamaica, how do we fix our urban crisis? I'm going to say to the housing minister, to the stakeholders in the housing development, let us do more for Jamaica. Let us build the houses. Let us do the rent to own where more Jamaicans can be enabled to live in houses 10, 15 years, which they own. If we can do that, Jamaica, just imagine every Jamaican having a piece of this lot, putting the necessary systems in place so that Jamaicans can own it and be disciplined enough. Discipline Jamaica to pay on a mortgage because no one want handout and the handout business will not work. We need housing solutions. My name is Andre Stevens and this is Unfiltered. Walk out.